Yeah, hello and welcome to today's webinar. We are very pleased that you are interested in the latest features and improvements of the Performer Suite. My name is Alex and today I would like to present you what's new in version 22.1. And before I start with this webinar, I want to thank all the people who are gave us great input and the, in the form of feature requests or bug reports. Some of them have been included in this release as well. Okay, so let's start with the webinar. And first of all, I would like to start with some organizational information. So you should receive an email from us where you can find the download link of the new version and where you can also find some advices. So especially you should do a backup. So you should back up your Performer Suite database before updating your version and update to 22.1 only works if the currently installed version is at least 21.1. Before I start with the actual part of the, perf of the webinar, a little hint, you can ask questions in the chat at any time. My colleague Malte will answer them during this webinar. And he will also send you, he will also provide you the download link for this presentation. So you can find it in the chat. Okay, so now let's move on to what's new in this version and we will start with some general improvements. So the first feature we will look at is especially useful for administrators of the Performer Suite because the Performer Suite has grown more and more in the last years and has gained many new features. As a result, the administrative part has also grown and it can happen that a new config configuration slipped through after an update and was therefore not maintained. To avoid this, we have developed the Admin Guide, an overview of all relevant and recommended configurations and settings. Let's have a closer look at the admin guide. So therefore, I will start the live demo and you can find the admin guide in the tab administration and then you can click on admin guide. And this admin guide is divided into three sections. So first we have the mandatory section and as the name implies in the mandatory area, we show all the configurations that absolutely must be maintained. So this includes function modules or other connection relevant settings. In addition, we also show you if and when the synchronization was last executed. Um, then we have the recommended area. So under recommended, you will find all the settings that significantly increase the functional scope of the performer suite. So primarily you can find um, things like, um, for example, Prim primarily, this is about the cross-system functions, so where the definition of a system mapping is necessary. For example, the HANA-HANA schema mapping in order to see calculation views and mixed scenario data flows or the source system mappings, which you need to maintain if you want to um, execute cross-system analysis functions from BW to SSC and vice versa. Um, we also see here the user management um, configurations and then, last but not least, we have the optional section. And here, configurations and settings are listed, which play a major role when a documentation concept should be established and realized. So we are talking about general settings or the word templates, scenario templates, or some documentation variants. At the very top of the admin guide, you see the progress indicator. And the progress indicator checks to what extent the settings and the mandatory section um, have been maintained. So for example, if, if I go to function modules and for example, I say, okay, I want to check the function modules for the system, I can click on check. And for example, also for this system, I can also click on check and connect with the system. And afterwards, if I go back to the admin guide and run the checklist, you will see that we update this from two to three. And also the progress indicator um, up, was also updated. So I can only recommend you to have a look into the admin guide. You may find a setting or configuration you don't know about and maintaining it may have the effect of making performance we deliver even more valuable results. 
All right, so let's move on to the next point, the XSA support. So in the past, we only supported HANA XS Classic. At the same time, the topping Topic XSA is getting more and more interesting for many of our customers. And often they ask us if XSA is supported in the Performer Suite. Well, starting with version 22.1, XSA objects can be synchronized for the first time. So let's jump into the live demo and take a closer look at this topic. Therefore, I will connect with the HANA XSA system in this case. And if XSA is enabled in your license, it has an impact on the HANA synchronization. So if I go to the synchronization, you will see that we added a new filter to the calculation views. And here you have to insert the so-called HDI containers, the logical constructs within the database where the HANA objects can be found. And after inserting the HDI containers, you can simply click on start synchronization and all of the HANA objects of the specified HDI containers will be synchronized. And these synchronized objects can then, for example, be documented. So I can, for example, right-click on this object and click on Create Documentation and document this XSA-based HANA calculation view. So there we go. I can click on this and we see that we have this documentation where we see all the columns and especially also for example the structure where is it here it is the structure and also the join conditions for example and so on so it is possible to document the calculation view we can also right click on this object and say analyze compare so we also support this um, system scout function as you can see here and this is also possible, so therefore you can also do comparison and so on. So what further developments are planned regarding XSA? Well, first of all, we will support more relevant XSA object types and add also more um, analysis functions. So I don't know, perhaps the where used analysis and so on. In addition, we currently only support XSA on premise. So we will still working, we are still working on the cloud support. All right, let's go back to the presentation and I'd now like to move on to the next part, support of SSC security objects. So in the new version of SSC object, the object types, um, sorry, new version, um, the SSC object types roles, users and teams can also be synchronized as you can see it here on the slide. Um, because there is often some confusion in SAC with these object types. One reason for this, for example, is the fact that roles can be assigned to users directly or indirectly via the membership in a team. So there are some intransparencies in SAC and the Performer Suite now supports you in working with these security objects. So how exactly? Well, first of all, it is possible to comment on the mentioned objects and document them like you know it from BW or other connectors. And you can also execute some system scout functions. So the three listed system scout functions are available for these object types. And we can check this also in the live demo. So therefore, I will jump to the SAC system. And on the left side, you will see that the mentioned object types are now listed in the entity, entity type, type 3. And then I can, for example, say, okay, I want to document this user. So my user, I call mock. And then I can wait and I will get a documentation of this user with especially the information regarding the role assignment. So this is the documentation. We see a table of content. We see some general information. Um, we see also some personal information. It is also possible to hide this area if, if, if necessary. We see some user preferences. And then most the most important thing, we see the granted roles. So we see that this role admin was assigned directly to, my, to the user Aquamog. And we have also two other roles which were assigned indirectly because I have I'm a member of the HR team and sales team in this case. 
I also mentioned the three functions. So first of all, I can, for example, analyze, for example, um, these objects. We are analyze compare. So I can display once again the assigned roles of this user. I can execute this function for users, like I did it, this, or also for teams, if I want to see um, which users are assigned to a team. So we see the granted roles, and from here I can also um, execute, for example, the function where used analysis. So I can check uh, which other users have this role, HR role, this HR role. And in addition, I can also add a new column. So for example, I can go here, click on assignment, and then we see if it's a direct assignment or an indirect assignment, what you also saw already in the documentation. So we see that this HR role was assigned to our hints, to the team, HR team, to our mock and developer. Um, the last function which I want to show you is the authorized users and teams function. So therefore I can select stories and analytic information. Um, I can add search for some specific objects. Here we go and then I can select these eight objects. Right click on them once again and say authorized users and teams. And here oh, this is the possibility to answer the questions which users and teams have permissions to interact with the analyzed stories and analytic applications and also in what form. So I can see that, for example, mHaring can um, share, read and delete and update this, um, in this case, the story and all users are only allowed, all other users are only allowed to delete and read it. So it is a nice way to get more information regarding the um, authorizations and permissions. Okay, let's jump back to the presentation and we will continue with System Scout and move on to the next function. So most of you should be familiar with the BW data flow and many of you should also be familiar with the fact that we only look down to the BW data source and our view does not go deeper towards the ERP system. So this is actually exactly what we want to change in the future and we have taken a first important step in the new version. So let's take a look um, in, this, in the tool itself. So I will connect with a BW system first of all and then I will open the data flow from a composite provider. So here we can see the composite provider. I display the data flow. And as I mentioned before, the BW data source are the limit. So with the new function, we can we also able to show the mentioned um, lower level entities. So I can click here on show level low lower level entities. And then, as you can see, the System Scout displays and then all the objects in the ERP system that play a role in the extraction process. For example, you can see um, classes or CTS views, tables, function modules, and so on. And the supported and synchronized object types can be analyzed. So I can say, for example, okay, it's interesting that I see this data definition, this CS view, but now I also want to display the build up of this object or I want to document this object and so on. Two things that are necessary. So the underlying ERP system must be licensed and the mapping between the BW and ERP system must be maintained. What is our roadmap regarding this topic? Well, in the next step, we try to display the actual source tables that are accessed by the logics. The function will be improved successful, successfully and um, that's why we currently consider it as a beta function. Okay, we will continue with the topic data flow, but we will now switch to the HANA system because the next improvement will especially make um, performance with users with mixed scenarios happy. So in version 22.1, the external HANA views and the HANA data, HANA data flow are now displayed as BW objects. Therefore, to show you this, I will open such a calculation view. 
So that's the calculation view and I can display it here. So if an external HANA view was activated for an BW object, then as you know, an HANA object will be created in the HANA system. And from now on, from this, from this new version, we display the external HANA view also as a BW object. So for example, let's assume that you open the data flow of a composite provider, then you see there is a calculation view because it is a mixed scenario. You can do a drill down, you can display the data flow of the calculation view, and then you see, aha, I also see this external HANA view, and we display it as an BW object and further um, drill downs are possible now. So I can then, for example, display the data flow from this um, IDSO and so on. So I can jump from one system to another system, from one data flow to another data flow, and that this is how I can gain uh, valuable information. Okay, let's move on. I will jump back to the presentation and the last improvement um, is dealing with the DocuPerformer. So all users who fre frequently document composite providers will benefit from this setting because in the documentation of composite provider, we have a really detailed list of all output properties, which took many pages in the documentation. And these um, output properties can now be deactivated. So as you can see, or well, let's jump to an example. I will open the documentation from a composite provider. That's it. And you see that we have 41 pages. And in this example, um, the output properties, if I jump, uh, if I scroll to this area, so you can see the output properties go from page 12 to 40. And this part can be removed by the new setting. So you can simply jump to the setting here and then you can find the setting um, here, output properties. And if you deactivate it, then um, the output properties will be removed from the documentation. Especially when documenting entire data models, for example, with scenarios, you, sh you should take a look at the settings in the, um, if the documentation is too overloaded. This can save many pages and the documentation won't be overloaded then. All right, so I will go now to the summary. So let's briefly recap what we saw on this webinar. So first of all, we looked at the admin guide, which provides a clear overview of the most important settings and configurations in the performer suite. Um, Next, we looked at how HANA XSR and SSC security objects can be synchronized, documented, and analyzed. And we also saw that we have three new functions um, with which we can display the buildup of security SSC objects. We can check the usage of the, the SSC security objects. And we can also check the authorized users and teams for specific stories and analytic applications. We saw also that we improved the drill down capabilities in the HANA data flow by adding the BW objects to the HANA data flow itself. And we display the extractors under the data sources in the BW data flow. Last but not least, we saw that a new setting was, um, was integrated to the performer suite. And with this setting, you can, um, you can adjust the level of detail. It can be reduced in the documentation of composite providers and you saw how users and SSC security objects can be documented. Of course, you can also comment on them and assign them to scenarios. If you want to get more information about the shown functions, I recommend you to visit our user manual. On the What's New page of the user manual, you can find um, all the new functions, the improvements, the changes in the um, in the products, and you can also jump in onto the page and to the page and get more information. And if you feel the need to learn even more about the shown functions, there is a possibility to test our products or connectors in full functionality. So feel free to contact us if you are interested. And this brings us to the end. I hope I was able to show you the exciting new features of 22.1 today. And yeah, thanks for your attention. I hope to see you again in future webinars and I wish you a nice day. Bye-bye.